Tonight on Joy News, former EC boss Afarijan raised alarm over the alleged use of national security personnel in perpetuation of electoral violence as he questions the collation of presidential election results through regional centers. Consider the setting up of regional collation centers in our presidential election to be a retrogressive step because it increases the number of points at which results can be manipulated. Meanwhile, he also calls for the criminalization of delay in releasing funds to MMDAs. Achieve any appreciable level of development in this country without fundamental reforms in our local government system. And this appears to be a season of salvation and biblical savior. Who do you trust to save you? Sergeant Kwano. Nyami Adumunti. John Dramani Muhammad. Any MDC Amanyoko. I came here to add value to this world and to nature. I am not going to live here without God. I came to you as your salvation. We also have business in this bulletin. And four illegal forex market operators have been arrested and two of them have been convicted. We'll bring you the rest by BOG. We are your home of independent, fearless and credible journalism. Please stay with us. We are grateful you could join us here on Joy News Prime. Now, former chairperson of the Electoral Commission, Farijan, is raising alarm of the alleged use of national security personnel in orchestrating electoral violence, raising questions over the pertinent incident threatening the country's democracy at a Constitutional Day public lecture. He said the Electoral Commission cannot continue to use regional centers to collate presidential election results when it's past confusion. Take a listen. Sure that the Electoral Commission is aware that most of the election controversies in recent times have centered on the counting and collation of votes. For this reason, I consider the setting up of regional collation centers in our presidential election to be a retrogressive step because it increases the number of points at which results can be manipulated. I understand that we borrowed the practice from Nigeria. Surprisingly, at a time when Nigeria was seeking ways to send results straight from the polling stations to one location. If our two major political parties are to be believed, they no longer have militias, if they are to be believed. But what is even more worrying is the allegation of the involvement of national security personnel in election violence. I'm afraid this is very serious and foreboding for our democracy. Now, he backed calls for the amendment of the Constitution, noting that some state institutions are becoming structures of dubious integrity. In principle, the calls for, to amend the Constitution are in order. Because the Constitution is not like a Bible, whose precepts are held to be unchangeable. If it were so, a Constitution would not contain procedures for making changes to it. In fact, by law, on a regular basis, some countries do an appraisal of their constitutional performance over the preceding period with a view to making recommendations for effective performance where necessary. Over the years, we have become poorer as a nation and as a people due mainly to pervasive corruption 
particularly in the public sector, in public life. Unfortunately, some of our key institutions are becoming institutions of dubious integrity. He added that it's long overdue MMDCs are elected to promote their accountability to the people. He argued that it should be made an offense for government to delay the release of statutory funds to assemblies. I strongly believe that we cannot achieve any appreciable level of development in this country without fundamental reforms in our local government system. I strongly believe that. Perhaps the failure of our local government system is best dramatized by the not infrequent calls on the president and the central government to provide toilets for towns and villages. I share the view that the district, municipal and metropolitan chief executives must be elected to promote their accountability to the local people. I think it should be made an offense to delay the release of any statutory allocation of funds to the assemblies. The present system whereby maybe first, second allocations do not go. Six months, no allocations gone. I think it should be an offense to delay the release of funds. Now, he also criticized the growing impunity with which politicians by vote openly against the dictate of the law. In days gone by, whatever vote buying or vote selling there was took place in secrecy. Not so these days. What we have now looks like an open market where candidates can freely buy votes and citizens can freely sell their votes in broad daylight while we all look on seemingly unconcerned. But it is a shameful spectacle. Because vote buying and vote selling are unlawful and they undermine two important principles that underpin our democracy. Vote buying undermines the idea that we choose our leaders out of our free will. And vote selling undermines the idea that we hold our elected leaders accountable through elections. I believe that our democracy is kaput when election results cease to be a true representation of our verdict on the performance of our leaders. And we cannot therefore hold them accountable through elections. Now, the National Commission for Civic Education says uh, citizens are equally to blame, just like politicians, for the continuous rise in the monetization in the country's election processes. Now, NCC Chair Kathleen Adi is calling on Ghanaians to be united in the fight against the vote, voter buying syndrome. The National Commission for Civic Education says blame should be apportioned to both politicians and voters. When it comes to vote buying, the Commission's chair, Kathleen Adi, says the huge financial demands by voters gives politicians no choice but to try and fulfill them. We need to be honest with ourselves that yes, maybe the politicians started this trend, giving handouts here and there, but today as we speak, we also know that the citizens actively demand money to vote. That is the truth. So it is not just a politician's problem. It is all of us our problem. It is a problem that we have to deal with. It is a canker that we must work to remove from our society because now it has become part of the political culture. Every political season is called a cocoa season. 
a harvest season. This is our time and all of that. Why? Because from the point of view of citizens, this is also time for them to exert maximum pressure and demand from politicians. The NCC again says media and faith-based organizations have failed in playing their part in ensuring most of these issues are curbed and urge them to do better. Media are partners from the, from the uh, uh, faith-based organizations, all of us together, to, to admit that we have gone wrong when it comes to this and, and commit to taking active steps to eradicate this thing from our society. We are all guilty. The citizens are guilty. The politicians are guilty. We need to accept it and start from there. The National Commission on Civic Education hopes to organize a series of exercises to educate the public on elections. From the NCCE headquarters in Accra, I'm Kenneth Jesse for Joy News. Now, a private legal practitioner, Martin Pebu, has criticized the government's attempt to justify the cancellation of the New Africa Foundation's convention yesterday. Now, on Sunday night, several armed men formed a blockade at the Independence Square, preventing hundreds who had traveled from across the country and without from entering the venue last minute, leaving them stranded. Now, hours later, government issued a statement justifying the necessity of its actions. We'll hear from Martin Pebu shortly, but first, there is a wrap of what transpired last night at the end Anger, chaos and disappointment for thousands as heavily armed police and military men stormed the Independence Square in Accra where patrons had gathered to participate in a convention called by the New Africa Foundation, a movement running on the wheels of the new force. A political movement which had until yesterday only had a mask as its identity. Because you sent your men, Dampari, you yeah. sent your men, oh, yeah. and then you they have the voice. From above. Order from above, you know the orders, and you know the power. This thing is, we not in the remit? is it not in the remit of the Constitution? Uh -huh. Hasn't it been organized within the remit of the law? Uh -huh. So how can you tell us that uh -huh. the power above uh -huh. us is canceling the program? Who uh -huh. network power to them? Yes. Who gets food power? Yes. Yes. Article yes. 1 of our constitution. What does it tell us? What does it says supremacy resides in, in, in the hands of the people, not in the hands of government. Yes. This is a state of power, not the government of power. This is a state of power. The group had secured the venue two months ago and heavily advertised the convention. A platform provided to address the challenges of Africa's development. Speakers invited for the program included Julius Malema a no-nonsense South African politician who has courted several controversies in the South African parliament for his strong stance on issues of corruption and underdevelopment. Call is a call for African unity, not cooperation, collaboration or coexistence. Other speakers included activist Dr. Lulumba, who served as the director of the Kenyan Anti-Corruption Commission for seven years and known for his profound and critical speeches. We are not at that venue. But is it not the wise to say when the world serves you a lemon, ask not for an orange, make yourself lemonade. We are here therefore to say that the message will be alive and well. His organization, the PLO Mumumba Foundation, seeks to mentor young Africans across the continent in various fields in an effort to radically change Africa's situation and bring prosperity to its people. Another speaker, Peter Obi, who took Nigeria by storm when he made significant inroads and nearly won the presidential elections there last year. Another anti-establishment African who believes current leaders are the cause of the continent's chronic economic problems. What I always say is that it is due to one problem, leadership. It is failed leadership over the years that brought Africa where it is. It was a lineup which promised to revitalize the Ghanaian youth and encourage them to vote out corrupt and non-performing leaders 
with elections due in Ghana in December. Hundreds were seated in readiness for the thought-provoking speeches from the speakers until information got through that government had revoked the permission granted the New Africa Foundation for the convention. The organizers called it an embarrassment and said their guests and attendees were shocked and devastated. They immediately organized a news conference where they invited guests to address the media. I've no doubt in my mind that there is a conspiracy of sorts by the elements that it has happened the way it has happened. So this is not an occasion for lamentation. It is an occasion for redoubling our efforts. This is the occasion for which the English word serendipity was created. It is a serendipitous occasion that heralds a great future for the continent of Africa. This is not the issue of colonialism. It is the issue I want us to start dealing with our problem. Educated people who are sitting in the boardrooms and they choose to be mute. And when they are mute while representing us, that means 1.4 billion Africans are mute. It is not the villager who is sitting at the boardroom table. It is the elite, the educated. So my son, what is our education doing to us? Speaking at the press conference, Nana Kwame Bidiako, also known as Freedom Jacob Caesar or Cheddar, used the opportunity to surprisingly unveil himself as the man behind the mask. I am a son of the soil and I can add value to humanity and I came here to do that. I came here to add value to this world and to nature. I am not going to live here without God even being proud of me. And when I'm not here also, I want you to remember that I came. And I want my absence to be felt. And for that reason, I know you're looking for the man. But the man in the mask is sitting in front of you. What's up? What's up? I am nothing to be scared of. I came to you as your salvation. I don't invest in myself alone. I am investing in you. Although it remains why the convention was stopped, Nana Kwame said he will in the coming days outdoor his policies for the rebirth of the new dawn. James Averge's report read to you. Now, in a statement issued few hours after the cancellation, the presidency explained the cancellation Quote, was necessitated by unforeseen state event scheduled to take place at the venue, end of quote. But reacting to this explanation, private legal practitioner Martin Pebu argues the cancellation amounts to the violation of the rights of the organizers of the event. There, there is no other rational conclusion. We've been extremely embarrassed. Why? Why do we have to do this? It's needless. It looks like every day we are sinking deeper and deeper. It's a shame because this is a breach of uh, the organizers' Article 21 rights. Article 21 of the Constitution guarantees freedom of speech, all right? Yes, including freedom of assembly, etc. So once the place was booked, you can't cancel it at that hour. It was just too late to cancel it. If anything, the state event had to be rescheduled. I mean, come on. So with this embarrassment, like Kuku Anidu who say, some heads must rule. Yes, we have to. And those people you interview, you see how they were very clear, clarity in thought, etc. They should agitate more because we have to hold some people accountable for this needless embarrassment. Now, based on new billboards emerging this morning, it is clear what the intentions of Nana Kwame Bediako is political. However, considering the current political atmosphere, what impact will his arrival at the political scene actually be? Now, joining us via phone for answers is a political scientist, Dr. Amwako Ba. Hi, Doc. 
First of all, no. uh, what is your reading of the uh, cancellation of the new Africa Foundations Convention event yesterday and government's subsequent uh, explanation that it was cancelled because of a state event? Well, it's a, it, is, it is appalling, disappointing, and actually illegal. If a person pays his money and books the place in advance, and it's okay, then when the day of the of this event comes, he shows up, then you cancel it. Unless you have some extraordinary uh, reasons, such as violence or anything like that, you mm. can't do that. That becomes an abuse of power by the government. Abuse of power, I can give you a whole list. Abuse of the man's uh, uh, freedom, human rights. I, I don't understand it. It looks like the government is afraid. Those gypsies, uh, I heard they arrested someone who was behind this and that. Freedom of speech is freedom of speech. You should be able to come and speak. You should be able to invite people that got visas to come here. So what is the point? What's your point? What are you afraid of for people to hear? So they want to cover all the bases. Don't take any chances. Don't give them. Right now, I don't know how many people would have gone to see Mr. Uh, uh, the Diaco. Mm. But by this fiasco, the issue has come up. And everybody would like to see him and, and hear what he has to say. So now he's going to begin what he became the Pergam. I advise him, you shouldn't say he's our savior. We haven't heard what he's going to say yet, what he's going to do yet. You can't say you are the savior. No. Now one, I'm advising him not, not to say that. But his, his ploy is, 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 is it a gimmick? It, it looks like today it's just a gimmick. Mm. But it shouldn't be. It's like the way he introduced himself to the Ghanaian public mm. with uh, all these people from international and different countries and in the international community, it's, it's okay. It makes it exciting. This is why people want to go and see him. They listen to these people. But after that comes the real work. The work of telling people who you are. Mm. That's, it. That's the thing. So now, you want to hear from him. You have to start talking. But I've, I've, I've already advised him, don't tell us you are, you are our savior. You don't know what you are going to do. You haven't told us what you are going to do, except the mask. So please, come again. All right. All right, Doc. Give us hope. Okay, so well, let's explore this angle a bit. Uh, we also see new billboards uh, emerging after yesterday's happenings. Uh, Nana Kwame Bediako has also been talking about a certain new force, like you rightly put it. Now, history tells us uh, how the likes of GCPP, CPP, PNC, and recently PPP attempted to actually fill that space, but they failed. Uh, as a political scientist, uh, would this one be any different? Uh, this is why what happened is a disappointment. It's not acceptable. If you should allow the man to introduce himself to Ghana. Mm. We'll listen to him. We've seen this before. Well, so what is the government afraid of? I don't understand it. Let him say what he has to say. Let him tell us how he's going to address the problems of the country. Well, he still has the chance in the coming days. Go around the country, talk on the radio. Uh, if he has money, yeah, that helps a lot. But it doesn't help too much by having people from the international community because many Ghanaians don't know these people. Many Ghanaians. Most of them don't know these people. Uh, it helps for initial introduction. That's all. It doesn't do anything. Else. Now you have the real world begin. So we are waiting to hear from you. Thank you so much, Doc. We appreciate your time. Now we're from the story, and this is National Chairman Johnson Asiedu Nketiah says. President Akufuado should channel his energy into bringing to book the perpetrators that killed eight people during the 2020 elections instead of waiting for a congratulatory message from former President John Mahama. Addressing the nation of uh, Constitution Day, President Akufuado said three years after the 2020 election, he is still awaiting a congratulatory message from his main opponent, John Dramani Mahama. 
there should be no lingering doubt about the legitimacy of the election. And the winning candidates on the conclusion of the process should receive the unalloyed support of all. That is how we can strengthen our democracy and the peace and stability of our nation. On a lighter note, three years on, I'm still waiting for my main opponent in the 2020 elections to congratulate me on my victory. I swore an oath on 7th January 2017, and again, four years later on 7th January 2021, to be faithful and true to the Republic of Ghana and preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution. I shall continue to do just that. Well, as Siedu Nkete said, former President Mahama has no intention of ever congratulating President Akufuado on his 2020 election victory. Nana Akufuado should rather be implementing the recommendations of the Commission of Inquiry, which he himself set up, that interrogated the actors and victims of the Ayawasu West war gone by election violence, and not be worried over congratulations from our flag bearer. We will not congratulate anybody who murders Ghanaians to secure power. We will not. <laughs> Similarly, he must not only be apologizing to the people of Santro Kofi, Akwafu, Likwe and Lolobi for disenfranchising them in 2020. But also, he must be ensuring their representation in Parliament is restored. Let me assure you, fellow Ghanaians, as we commemorate 31 years of the 1992 constitution that restored Ghana to democratic governance, that the next NDC government shall deliver justice to all victims of this government's misrule. And we mean it. Meanwhile, Johnson has said in Ketia claims majority of MPP affiliated candidates that participated in the recently held district level elections lost woefully. While admitting it is illegal to be politically inclined at the district level, the research shows candidates that lean towards the NDC perform exceedingly well, a clear indication Ghanaians will vote the party back into power later this year. Already, thousands of Persons affiliated to MPP have lost the district level elections miserably. The elections are non partisan. It is illegal for any political party to seek to sponsor any candidate. But the identity of the candidates and participants are known. And so, we have conducted a compilation of persons who contested from our ranks, who contested the district assembly elections. And I can tell you that the voters down there If they know you to be a person affiliated to MPP, they vote you out. Now, President Mahama says, I am the biblical savior. Uh, Nana Kwame Bediako says, I come to you as your salvation. Do you need saving? What or who do you trust to save Ghana? Savior, Savior, Savior. Sergeant Kwano. 
Nyame adum nti. Eh John Dramani Muhammad any end this amanyoko. I came here to add value to this world and to nature. I am not going to live here without God. I came to you as your salvation. I don't invest in myself alone. I am investing in you. Well, Ghanaians have been reacting to this particular question. We'll take you to social media and see how they've been reacting. You have Prince Kujo Osei there saying the man who couldn't provide common chalk will vote for Dr. Baumia, he says. There we have uh, uh, Sarauta Mohammed uh, being in a position for nearly eight years without offering a single new concept or alternative policy aside, uh, you know, restating his broken 2012 promises means that Mr. Mahama has nothing new to offer the people of Ghana. Then we also have Bernard Blessing Mensan. He says, we are first the savior of ourselves. Now it's clear that no politician or political party can save Ghana. Watch carefully and choose a leader in December, not a politician. Politicians are all into business, not interested in helping the country Ghana. And then we have uh, other comment from uh, Swedro Van Damme. He says, Kai John Mahama Padie, never again. And Manuel Dako also says, so Mahama and uh, Cheda, who is the savior now, all of them belie as they are preaching, claiming the savior title and all that. So a lot of uh, commentary there. You can also go onto our social media uh, platform and share your thoughts on that. You're still watching Joy News Prime with me, Carlos Caloni. We'll take a short break. We'll return with business. Please stay with us. Welcome. Let's do some business news now with me, Emma Davis. The Asukwa Circuit Court 2 in Kumasi has fined Senior Poku and Yasewa of Senior Poku Enterprise, an unlicensed foreign exchange bureau operating at Patasi in Kumasi, 600 penalty units, which is equivalent to 7,200 cities each. The convicted persons pleaded guilty to charges of conspiracy of engage in the business of dealing in foreign exchange without licenses and engaging in the business of dealing in foreign exchange without licenses. The Ashanti Regional Police Command, in collaboration with the other financial institutions, uh, supervision department and the security department of the Bank of Ghana, investigated and arrested four persons dealing in foreign exchange without approval and a license from the bank. The undercover investigation began on October 29, 2023, and concluded on December 3, 2023. The other suspects awaiting trial are Adam Isaac and Al Hassan Nuhu of Makowasi Forex Bureau, another unlicensed foreign exchange bureau also operating on the KNUST campus, Kumasi. Now, the Ghana city is expected to lose about 8.4% in value to the U.S. dollar in the retail market this year. That's according to IC Research. It foresees the mid-dollar rate to city at 13 cities, 10 persuades to the dollar. There's more in this business desk report. The depreciation of the city will be far lower than the about 15% recorded last year. In 2024... IC research experts improved fundamentals as a result of expected multilateral inflows and appropriate monetary stance. This will partly offset election-related and external debt restriction uncertainties. The city enjoyed stability in December 2023, helped by the Bank of Ghana's monetary squeeze. The Cocoa Board syndicated loan, among others. Bloomberg neither classified the local currency in the best port returns nor worst port returns category in 2023. It rather pegged the unit at 11 cities, 95 pesos to the American Greenback on December 29, 2023, the last day of trading in 2023. However, the Forex Bureau sold the city at 12 cities, 18 pesos to one US dollar. 
Let's go to the aviation industry. As aviation expert Sean Mendes is optimistic the aviation industry will record continuous growth in 2024. According to him, statistics show that the sector has rebounded to pre-pandemic levels and there's a likelihood of an increase in passenger numbers in 2024. I think aviation in 2024 is going to continue growing. Uh, you know, 2023 was the first year after the pandemic where we really saw no restrictions in travel around the uh, the world. And I think we've seen throughout the world and, you know, especially in Africa, other than in South Africa, every African country has met and exceeded its uh, its its pre-pandemic levels of, of travel. Ghana had already achieved that, you know, two years ago, so it wasn't a big deal in Ghana necessarily. But, uh, you know, even South Africa is beginning to catch up now. Uh, they're about, I think, 10 to 15 percent below where they were in uh, in 2019. And uh, the rest of the world, you know, has has recovered. So I think 2024 is going to see another year of growth. And I think globally 2024, just given the fact that, you know, the, the markets continue to grow and we no longer have any restrictions, uh, we're likely to see a, a, an all time record in terms of passenger numbers. So I'm optimistic and I hope that you know, that issues like this and safety concerns don't stop people from getting on planes, flying and seeing the world. Interest rates fell once again with an anticipated ease in December 2023 inflation. According to auction results by the Bank of Ghana, demand for treasury bills surged. Here's more in this report. The 91-day bill eased to 29.19% from 29.24% the previous week. The 182-day bill also went down by 14 basis points to 31.74%. Again, the 364-day bill retreated to 32.34% from 32.48% previously. With the Ghana Statistical Service set to announce December 2023 inflation on Wednesday, January 10, 2024, it is likely interest rates will go down further next week. Meanwhile, the government got 15.24% more than the targeted amount of 2.837 billion cities. The majority of the bids came from the 91-day bill. 2.143 billion cities that were tendered were all accepted. It was followed by the 182-day bill in which 595.72 million cities were tendered. All the bids were accepted. For the 364-day bill, 484.22 million cities of the bids were tendered. The uptake was 479.43 million cities. Welcome. Now let's pick the thoughts of finance lecturer at the University of Ghana Business School, Dr. Jabir Mohammed, reacting to the Treasury bill market, saying government's inability to borrow from the international market will increase pressure on the domestic money market, and this is likely to prevent a decrease in interest rates. Speaking on the marketplace earlier today, Dr. Jabir Mohammed said governments will have to find ways to honor its debt obligations to salvage the situation. Government don't have any option in the international capital market simply because we have serious implication on, 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 on our external debt. And as uh, Ya already said in the first place, we cannot even get any form of bilateral debt from any of our bilateral creditors. So once we cannot obtain any amount of money from them, definitely the government is going to rely on domestic debt. Uh, domestic borrowing and also government may require bank of ghana to support its budget because we have about 50 billion deficit to be able to cover in 2024 alone so that 50 million deficit that we have to cover in 2024 alone requires that we need 
additional funding from the domestic sources because the external sources have been cut off. So uh, we have to bear in mind that interest rates are not likely to come down any moment from now. That will be all for business. My name is Emma Davis. For more business news, do log on to myjoyonline.com. Up next is Showbiz. Studio with showbiz. What do we have? Well, first of all, happy new year to you. It's mm. my first time seeing you yeah, today. You're looking good in 2024. Yeah. Yeah. Nice one. <laughs> all right. Now we started with Guinness World Record. Now Ghanaian makeup artist Della Gome embarked on his Guinness World Record for the most lipstick applications in 30 seconds over the weekend. He applied lipstick to eight models in 30 seconds, doubling the current record of four applications set by Chinese makeup artists in 2018. Gome initially set a goal of seven models but added one during the attempt exhibiting agility and poise under pressure. Five, four, three, two, one. Ghanaian beauty guru Della Gome has not only shouted by redefining the limits of glamour by attempting the Guinness World Record for the most lipstick applications in just 30 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. This owl inspiring feat shares the inspiration behind his audacious pursuit of the lipstick record breaking triumph. Okay, so as you said, there are lots of record-breaking uh, attempts, but I chose uh, to apply lipstick on ladies within 30 seconds to exhibit my skills, to put my brand on board, and to also put the whole Ghana on the map. It evolves a lot. To break a record, it's not an easy task at all. So first, you need to be determined. You need to know your speciality, what you are very special at doing, your uniqueness, so that alone would guide you to the record you want to break. The day I was applying, I thought it was just a joke, it was just something for fun. But initially, when I sent the first uh, application, it came, they sent me an email telling me they've received their uh, application. I was like, really? So this is serious. The less unwavering dedication received a resounding endorsement from his father on this thrilling quest. So when it came to me that, that this is what I want to do, I said, wow, do you think you can do it? So I started quizzing him about the uh, previous holder because he's the current holder. So I would yeah. say the previous holder yeah. and he yeah. gave me some details and I went to Google on it and I said, well, four models, 30 seconds. And I've seen him doing a lot of things and I knew that from that day, if he really persevered, if he focused on his target, he would do it. So I was not surprised at all that he did it last Saturday. The fever of Guinness World Record attempt is sweeping through Ghana and the question lingers, which record-breaking endeavor can you embark on? For Joy News, I am Jacqueline Asma Yoboa. Mm. I'm still thinking about what record I can break. Yeah. <laughs> We're still we'll on. about that now. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. should. Now, still on Guinness World Record now, when Ghanaian chef Fila Abdul Razak took the challenge to break the world record for the longest cooking marathon, she did not anticipate that her efforts will attract celebrities and personalities from all over Ghana. After eight days of cooking, some celebrities have been rallying behind Phyla. Chef Phyla Abdul Razak has been cooking for 187 hours. She began her attempt on January 1st, 2024 to become the Guinness World Record holder for the longest cooking marathon attempt by an individual. Notable personalities including politicians and celebrities have thronged the modern city hotel at Tamale in the northern region to show their support for Phyla to Abdul Razak. On the first day, several celebrities visited the venue to show their support, including Ghanaian musician Kwabena Kwabena. And um, it's so motivating. And um, I don't know what to say. I am just excited to be a Ghanaian right now. It feels good to be a Ghanaian. Yao Dabo, a Ghanaian actor, also showed his support and called for more celebrities to encourage Chef Fyla to in her endeavor. Northern region, Tamale, stars and movie stars, musicians, um, 
Ghanaian comedian SDK and Clemento Suarez has also made an appearance at the venue. I just finished my first food, probably waiting for the second one. I want some two soupy. You understand? That's what you are looking for. Yeah, some two safi, some young mewa, some bang mewene, some sangbawele, some everything. You understand? Yeah, I think her energy is. I mean. Uh, Shafila intends to cook for 240 hours with hopes of setting an unbreakable record. For Joy News, I am Jacqueline Asma Yoboa. Well, 240 hours yeah, is still smoking. counting. Yeah, still counting. Yeah. She intends to end on Wednesday. Yeah. Anyway, that's all we have time for in this hour. You can log on to myjoyonline.com for more stories. My name is Carlos Caloni. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening.